seem mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the new. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King.
Joy to the world, let's sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King, let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy, 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 joy to the world, joy, 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 joy to the earth, the Savior reigns, let them in their song of joy, joy, of fields and of floods, hills and lanes, rejoice the sound of joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Joy, 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 Far as the curse is found, joy, joy, as far joy, as the curse joy, is found. Joy, 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 joy to the world. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Joy, 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 joy. Joy, 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 joy to the world. The first snow. what it sounds like if I mess up the uh, streaming this coming Sunday. Um, I watched it back and I felt like that um, you only uh, could understand it if I was reading your reading lips. Well, I just want you, uh, each of you should have received a, a, a deacon um, a ballot. And uh, if you did not receive one coming in, uh, would you raise your hand? Okay, we've got one right there. Uh, it'd be Leslie, right? I'm learning names, okay.
Okay, does everyone have, okay. You can, you can uh, as long as you kind of uh, turn uh, them in, uh, we'll give some time right when we're getting ready to do Advent. So if you haven't turned it in, then that way they can um, do some counting uh, and such prior to that. Before we get into um, uh, a time of, um, of, of musical praise, uh, I want us as a church family to, uh, to remember um, uh, Eric and uh, Whitney's dad. I just got a call um, right before I came in. Let's see, are you giving me? That's not for me. Okay, all right. Okay, so, um, but he is not doing well, and they're not expecting him uh, to um, to make it. Um, he is going into septic, and beyond that, his. Um, his grandmother just had a stroke, and they're taking her to the hospital. So, um, so just uh, keep Eric and his family in your prayers. And I know that this time of year, there are many other people with with prayer needs, and uh, I'm having a mental um, uh, brain um, uh, loss, but. What's your name? The, the gentleman that um, talking about his wife's shoulder. Tell me your name again. Rod. Rod. Okay. Rod Ellis. Okay. All right. All right. I got the. I knew it would come at least. Um, so, can I? I'll just get partial credit for that one. Huh? Um, and uh, you were telling me that your uh, your wife is still um, adjusting. She had her um, left. Okay, so um, and so just pray. What's your wife's name? Debbie. Debbie? Pray for Debbie as she um, adjusts, and pray for Rod as he um, is getting ready to retire, and um, and as they move to Jamaica. So. Uh, um, I just wonder. If, you, if there's two, there's usually someone else, and, and I'm just going to go off script a little bit, but is there anybody else that might have a prayer need that they may want to share? Yes, ma'am, Star. Okay. Jean, Jean Timmons. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, a Dr. Blanchard passed away. Yes, Stuart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mark Champagne fractured his foot. So um, please pray for Mark. Someone else? Yes, sir. Okay. So, all right. Someone else? What can we pray for? country. Do you have an exam? Are you done with the exam? I finished my exam. He's finished his exam? You. She's done? Are you you're done no, exam? All done. Okay. All right. So, um, and so we can pray uh, then that grades will change, right? Or, uh, no, uh, yeah. Okay. Anything is possible with the <laughs> Lord. So, um, someone else. Let's pray together. And what I'd like to do is if, um, let's just have a moment of silent prayer. Um, and as you heard some different prayer needs, would you lift them? And then I'll verbalize it. And um, let's pray.
Jesus, you've heard these names. Some I can remember, but you heard them all. I pray, Lord, as, as we are gathered here this morning, that you would you would be with Eric and his family and Whitney and her family and with Mike. Lord, I pray that even as people are watching this streaming um, service, that the amount of prayer would be multiplied. Father, I know what it's like to, to be prepared to say goodbye. So, Father, I ask that you'd comfort their hearts. I pray for his grandmother that, that, um, that they can diagnose her. But, Lord, I ask that you would wrap your arms around this family as they as they prepare to say goodbye. Lord, I um, I pray Jesus for um, all the needs that were lifted here. And Lord, may we be a people of prayer believing that you can do the impossible. And even as I pray this prayer, I pray, oh Lord, for Pastor Daryl and Jane, that you would uh, give them an incredible Christmas. And Lord, I ask that you would move in this service in a way, Lord, that we can know that we've been in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to sing a song to start us off that we sang last week. So I invite you guys to stand if you're comfortable with doing that. And let's leave this in worship. I've seen what you can do, oh God of your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. Because there's no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up, but oh, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise. Death is overcome, but you've already won. Oh, God of revival, you rose in victory, and now you're seated forever on your throne. So, why should my heart feel? you've defeated I will trust in you alone cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can't move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible. In the darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up. Oh, God of revival, let hope arise. Death is overcome. You've already won.
we sing this out, and we believe this. We sing it like we believe it. Come on, come away from your people. Come away from your people. Come away from your city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I'll hear the chants hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awake in your people. Come awake in your city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out. chapter 2, verses uh, 8 through 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Going to uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And last, in Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 and 4, the Bible tells us, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And, the, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away.
way it looks like the letter E, right? E stands for the E where the star was shining bright. The next one, if you take that E and you turn it this way to make a letter M, that stands for the manger where baby Jesus slept. And if you turn that M to where it looks like the number three, that represents the three wise men who brought gifts to baby Jesus. And then if you turn it one more time to where it looks like a W, you're such a good helper, Taylor. That stands for Worship and sing them praises to Jesus. I have a Bible verse from the International Children's Bible, Psalms 150, verse 6. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So whenever you eat M&M, I want you to look at the letter M, the letter M and turn in all the different ways that you can remember about the Jesus story. All right, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for blessing us today and every day. I pray we will cherish today and share a smile full of love and hope with those who need it. I ask you to bless these children, keep them healthy and safe, and above all, let them feel your presence and love through Wise Drive Baptist Church. Thank you for allowing me to work with these children who are so special and important to me. Please be with those that are suffering. We love you. Amen. Please stand and sing with us.
that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb it conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not fade. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Jesus, thank you so much for allowing us to come together today and worship you in your house. Um, please prepare our hearts as Pastor Kevin brings a great Christmas message straight from you, Lord, and help us to have a great Sunday. Amen. I watched and I was uh, mute a uh, few minutes into the uh, message. Is my microphone on? All right, good, okay. I'm thinking, wow, I've ruined it for all the streamers, except for Christine saved the day, was saying, he always does this at the very beginning of his message, so, uh, and so, and so to keep that uh, chain going, we've talked about four C's. Four C's that during this time and season at Wise Drive that we ought not to do. Uh, and then I'll tell you, then we'll talk about what we should do. So give me one of the C's. Anybody? Complain. We ought not to complain. Now, we aren't going to always agree, but we ought not to complain um, uh, because at times we just must, might just want to wait. And see what's going to happen. So in this season in the life, um, when we talk about the four C's, don't just uh, you know be quiet during the service, but you know uh, don't complain. All right, another one. I said, what's that? Confuse. This is not a season to run around um, in panic, but guess what? Because this is God's church, and God's got this. What's well, another C? Compare. Um, it does us no good to compare to all the other um, that are around because God is unique here. And the last C, what would that be? Control. In the midst of all of this, don't just jump to try to figure it out before God's given you the answer. But in the midst of this season, let's choose instead to not be afraid to stand firm or still and to wait upon the Lord. And if you're watching this uh, via uh, uh, Facebook, and I would imagine that there are people all over uh, who are viewing that are in maybe some sort of crisis today, God says to you, don't be afraid. Stand firm, stand still, and wait on the Lord. Over the next two weeks, leading up to Christmas, I'm going to focus from the different perspective of a shepherd. We're going to kind of lay the groundwork of, of a shepherd today, and then we'll uh, pick it sort of back up tomorrow, I mean uh, next Sunday. But this morning I want to ask you the question, who are the shepherds? 
today. Who are the shepherds in Sumter? Who are the shepherds that are around you every day? And next week, I'm going to ask you the question, who or what is your sheep? Who or what is your sheep? If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. Now, I had, if it weren't for uh, copyright, I would be doing really good because I had a really good idea uh, of pointing to the screen and letting from Charlie Brown Christmas, Linus, remember that scene uh, in Charlie Brown Christmas where Charlie Brown says, can anyone tell me about Christmas? And then the light's kind of dim, and Linus with his blanket, and he reads this passage. But I guess it's copyrighted and they can't show it. So you can at least have that picture in your mind as we read this morning. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a host of others the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and there was the baby lying in a manger. Would you pray with me? Father, I ask that you would speak through me, in spite of me, this morning. Lord, that you would speak to each heart that's here and each heart that's watching online. that they would have an encounter with a real God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in order for us to get a picture of what it was like, let me take, tell you a, a, what the picture of a shepherd would be like in the days of Jesus, okay? Shepherds were in the bottom rung of the Palestinian social ladder. They shared the same enviable status as a tax collector. Shepherds were officially labeled sinners, which is really a, a technical term for a class of despised people. The Mishnah, uh, Judaism's written record of the oral law, refers to shepherds in less than good terms. One pas passage describes them as incompetent, Another one says, no one, now look, this is what they're talking about with a shepherd, how they're viewed. No one should ever feel obligated to rescue a shepherd who's fallen into a pit. Another commentator wrote, to buy wool, milk, or a kid, a baby uh, a goat from a shepherd was forbidden on the assumption that it would be stolen. Shepherds were deprived of civil rights. They could not, even if they saw a crime being committed, they weren't allowed to testify. Shepherds were outdoorsmen. 
And most shepherds spent more time with animals than they did with humans. And because they dealt with animals, there were certain portions of the temple that they were not allowed to go in, and so they were restricted from worshiping. They were seen as thieves. They were seen as liars. In the marketplace, when a shepherd might enter the marketplace, all eyes would be on that shepherd or shepherds because they thought they were up to no good. In fact, a Jewish philosopher of that day wrote that tending to sheep could be summed up as no good. That's what the world around them talked about. That's what they knew. That's what the children of shepherds knew. It would be their lot in life. There really would be no hope for societal change. So many shepherds grew up to hate people because animals did them no harm, but people were constantly putting them down. Especially God, because they equated God with the temple. And how could they go and and, and worship a God that they were unclean to even come near? They were outcasts. Cursed men and women without hope. So you get the picture of shepherds. Now, I did not say that shepherds were poor. Sometimes we'll equate shepherds with being poor, but oftentimes people had to buy the animals, and, and, and so shepherds weren't necessarily poor. But think about some of those characteristics, and we're going to be coming back to those characteristics in a little bit. Now, what you cannot miss in the Christmas story is this. Number two, God spoke in the language and the culture of the shepherds in order to introduce Jesus. God spoke in their language. If you, if you miss this, you miss the whole picture of The Christmas story. God so loved those outcasts. God so loved those marginalized. God so loved these shepherds that he allowed them to hear and experience the hope found in Jesus first. But look carefully how the angel invited them. The angels did not say, listen, You're about to see Jesus. You're about to see a baby, but you kind of smell. So would you go find a place to clean yourself up? No, that's not what the angels said. The angels did not say, listen, a baby's born who's going to be the king. So you must go to the temple and through a window of a window of a window, you might be able to see Jesus. No. God didn't ask them to change one thing. He did not ask them to go to some refined location. God, through the first angel and then the second, and then the multitude of angels said this to the shepherds. And the angels said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, unto you, not unto everybody but the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And they're kind of puzzling, thinking, you know, Did we eat something funny or whatever? And so the angel follows up in verse 12 and says, And this shall be a sign unto you. Who? You? The shepherds. This shall be a sign to the shepherds that you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. 
the shepherds got the best worship service ever, and they never went to the temple. Because God cared enough about them and loved them enough to bring it to them. And not only this, not only did God come to the shepherds, but he spoke to them in their language and culture. They were asked what? To go see a baby, the king, Jesus, in a stable, a barn, surrounded by animals, wrapped in a poor man's blanket, lying in a manger, a feed trough for the animals. In fact, it would seem that the whole pilgrimage of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem was because God so loved the shepherds. These rejects, these supposed criminals, these shepherds. So we've looked at what shepherds were like in that day. We've looked at what shepherds, what Jesus, what God did in bringing Jesus to the shepherds and speaking their language. And so now I want to make it more personal. Who are the shepherds in our world? in our traffic pattern today. Think back of how they were described. They were kept from the church. They didn't feel like they were good enough to walk in the church. They stood on the outside looking in. They felt marginalized. They didn't understand. They had a distorted view of God because they had seen the picture of God from the religious people. And so they thought that God was like the people that had showed them so much harm. Last week I told you as we talked about loving our neighbor as ourself and one of the points, and I gave you my action sta statement, our step, that I was going to... Uh, go to this uh, uh, lady's house that constantly comes to the office and says, I'm diabetic, do you have a diet soda? And I also, we have these health kits we collect, can I have a health kit? And so, with the help of uh, uh, three other elves, uh, we had our, our wise drive staff meeting at, at the office, Santee Baptist Associational Office, and so I had two cases of Diet Pepsi. And we went over and, uh, and brought the Diet Pepsi to Miss Mary and prayed with her. And Miss Mary is very much a shepherd because no one pays her any mind. She sat on the steps, and I know why she would sit on the steps. She was waiting for me to bring the, the, the Pepsi, because she didn't have anything else to do. Driving on Broad Street, I see so many people that's so easy to pass by. Who are the shepherds? Perhaps they're the homeless in our community. So easy to pass them by. It's so easy to say, well, they're just onto drugs. And not know that they have a story. Or perhaps the elderly, the people in the hospital, the nursing homes. It's amazing how hungry for attention, but it's so easy to pass them by. And it's not just those that are poor but I believe that the rich as well I had a friend whose, whose ministry focused on reaching the sports athletes and he was a chaplain for the Cleveland Indians 
And you'd be surprised how many of the athletes, because they were wealthy, thought there was no place to go to church. No place to see Jesus. Or perhaps the millions of people in our world that have written off Jesus because they've seen pictures of how religious people sometimes act. And they say, I don't want any part of that. Some people even watching today, it's safe to watch from your stream because perhaps you were hurt by a church and you vowed I'll never ever go back in the doors of a church. Shepherds. Shepherds can be rich or poor, young or old. They just can't see Jesus for who and what he is. For the shepherds in our world today, the church is loudly said, come, but conform to our culture. It's sometimes tough when you invite somebody that's never been to church because it's almost like inviting them to China and they don't know the language. They don't know what, they don't know what you're going to do. They, they don't know what's going to happen. And so we need to be more like the Lord where he spoke in the language of the shepherds by going to the shepherds. I, I, I told you last week about uh, probably the end part of the story. But throughout my life, God's just constantly surrounded me with shepherds. And you can find shepherds if, if you ask the Lord to open your eyes. Matthew found a whole lot of shepherds if you look in the, new, in the, uh, in the Gospels. And he invited all of his fellow tax collectors and so-called sinners to dinner with Jesus and the religious people had a fit. Why are you worshiping with such scum, they said. But when I was in Texas, I was working as a uh, uh, volunteer youth uh, minister, and I had the, the worst youth group you could ever have. In fact, they were so, I mean, it, they were, it was just horrendous that sometimes I would have to learn how to restrain them. And, and so I met this one lady because her kids get, kept getting kicked out of the youth group. And she would come pick her up, and her name was Nancy. And I got to know Nancy because she had to keep picking up her two teenagers from church. And Nancy had a friend who was an elderly lady. She was probably in her 80s, and she would fill her car up with food, and she would go and bring out the food to the people. And this lady on her deathbed said, Nancy, promise me you'll go to church. And Nancy said, okay. So the very next Sunday, right after she would made that promise, Nancy, true to her word, came to church. I was so excited. The next week came, and I said, I, I know Nancy said she had a good time, so I know she'll be back. We pastors are kind of gullible. You guys, you know, you know uh, people say, I'll be back. I'm coming. She didn't come. And I did something that I've, I don't think I've ever done before. I told the pastor, I'll see you back for Sunday night service. I am going to Nancy's house to find out why she didn't go to church. Now, the safest place for a non-churched, non-Christian, for nobody to bother them at their door is about 11 o'clock on Sunday morning because everybody's in their, uh, in their um, places. 
So I'm knocking on the door, and she was really surprised. And I said, can I come in? She, she said, sure. And I said, Nancy, where, where are you? Where did you go? And she said, it's not for me. And I said, tell me why it's not for you. And she said, well, I can't read. And when I sat in that class, someone asked me to read. And I said, I was embarrassed. And again, I've never really done this before. Maybe I should do it more often. I said, I'll make a deal with you, Nancy. Let's play a game show here. I'll never, ever invite you to church if you let me bring church to your house. And she thought that was okay. So we started a Monday Bible study for someone who had never, ever heard anything about Jesus. And on the second Bible study, Nancy asked Jesus Christ to be her Lord and her Savior. Shepherds, they're around us. But we just got to open our eyes. Final shepherd I found out. I was in seminary. And I think I've told you this before, so I'm not having a senior moment. I'm just going to repeat this illustration. But I was at the United Way, and, they, and they, I said, listen, I'm a seminary student, and I want to love on some people and maybe pray for them, teach them. We got the perfect person for you, Kevin. And they sent me to the home of Bernice Moon. I went to Bernice's house. She had been basically an invalid for about five years. Her husband had died. She had no one to check on her. And so I was just so prepared to give her all of my new seminary wisdom. And she looked up at me and said, I'm so glad you're here. And I said, oh, what do you want me to pray for you on? She said, um, no, not that. I want you to get my groceries for me. And I said, okay. How hard can that be? So I, I, I got there on that Monday, because she wanted her groceries um, frequently, I guess. But I found out that Bernice was a couponder. I also found out that Maurice, I mean, not, I mean, Bernice, Bernice would get the newspaper and she would circle the stores that she wanted each product to be bought and bought by. And that she did not like, she just liked, so I would go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it would literally take two hours. And I, 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 when other people were talking about the, the places that they were working in, I said, oh, yeah, I'm a, I wonder how I can put on my resume First Baptist Church of Bernice Moon because I'm spending uh, 10 hours uh, with Bernice. But Bernice began to get stronger, and she began, she would have the dominoes out. Of course, we were in Texas. And she would have uh, some beans on. And I got to know Bernice. Later, which sort of tells you how popular I was in seminary, Bernice and Nancy, the lady I just told you about, they hosted my um, uh, graduation um, party from seminary. Um, so uh, I had two shepherds there. Um, and after seminary, I went to uh, stay with Bernice till I figured out what I wanted to do. And one evening, Bernice uh, had to take several nitroglycerin pills. And she said, if I take five, you've got to call 911. So I was there, and I gave her the pills, and we had to call 911, and I held her hand and put a washcloth on her head. 
But to, but to back up even to that point, a year earlier, in a devotion, Bernice had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior at age 77. And now fast forwarding it to that point, the EMS folks came, they took her and she, she died uh, heading to the hospital. And yet I thought, the Lord loved Bernice so much. The Lord loved this shepherd so much that he sent me for two years to buy her groceries and her medicine and her chow chow, which I still don't like that she would make me buy. Just so that this lady at 77 could be in heaven and just so when she was on her deathbed ready to meet Jesus there was somebody there to hold her hand and put a cloth on her head we miss a blessing when we miss the shepherds in our world and so I want to challenge you this week. Here's your homework. Ask the Lord to show you a shepherd. And ask him to tell you what you are to do. Find your shepherd. You'll never find your shepherd by just a big old banner, y'all come. You're going to find your shepherd by getting dirty, going out, doing what you hate. I still hate the shop. I, I, when Penny goes out, I want to find out, is this a long shopping? Is this a pick up and go? And don't change your mind. Because I don't like to shop, and yet it took shopping. For me to minister to the shepherds named Nancy and Bernice. In just a little bit, we're going to pray, and I just will have a time of invitation. If God has spoken to your heart in any way, I'm here. If you want to come and just pray, You just come as God leads. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, you are the Lord. Show us, shepherds. Lord, if each of us would focus on our shepherds, on our individual shepherds, this time next year, Lord, this church, would have many new people. And maybe, Lord, there's someone watching who thinks I am a shepherd. May they have the courage to trust. May they have the courage to risk because you love them so much. And so, Lord, in whatever way you choose, would you lead us in the direction we are to go? In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand?
mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. Just a couple quick announcements. Uh, linger here just a little while. There's going to be a, um, a business, a uh, brief business session. Uh, and uh, you've already voted on the deacons, so they'll kind of let you know what those results are going to be, I think. 
and, uh, and then they'll go over the budget. Um, I have got to uh, quickly head to um, uh, Monk's Corner with two of the babies, and um, so I won't be able to stay for the, the business session. So um, uh, nobody made me mad, and I stormed out. I'm just letting you know I just got to get to um, Monk's Corner. Uh, uh, my mom, uh, I think she does more comments on streaming, so, um, so she's watching it knowing, okay, now uh, it's almost there, so uh, it's bleeding out. So, um, but just linger uh, enough. Um, Penny uh, will be here, and I, I, I think that there's uh, some things that she wants to get straight with the, um, Christmas, the Christmas Eve. Please, even now, be thinking who you might could invite to Christmas Eve. Um, we can get into all the comparing and going, wow, that church is having one, that church is having one. Just let all that kind of go. And ask the Lord who needs to be here at Wise Drive on Christmas Eve. So, um, uh, and it's only going to happen through your inviting, um, and it's going to be—it'll be a good uh, uh, time of worship. This coming Wednesday, we will be uh, continuing our fellowship Wednesdays, and so you can have uh, Chick Fil A. And so, just let Christine know either through the bulletin or, or, or just calling that you want to reserve free Chick-fil-A and this coming Wednesday we're going to do something a little different we're going to go COVID Christmas caroling now COVID Christmas caroling means we're not leaving the church we're going to uh, go old school and have our phone uh, a, a designated phone we're going to hit speaker and we're going to sing from the the fellowship hall to different people that may not be able to get out. And so if it's all up to me, um, the music will be a little stilted. So uh, y'all come and we can have a fuller kind of choir feel uh, in that. Um, I think that's, is there, is there anything? Okay. Um, still continue to remember um, uh, Eric and Whitney's father. And um, those who have lost a father uh, or someone significant know how hard it is when you're waiting and you're just sitting and you're not sure when that time is coming. So if you can, show him uh, uh, the love that I know that you have by uh, surrounding him with prayers. If you have a cell phone, text him and say, I'm praying for you this day let's pray together father thank you for this time thank you for this church thank you for uh, uh, Ashley and Ashley and Bart and Ethan and Hannah who came to lead us in worship I thank you God for the evidences that I'm seeing that you're constantly sharing that you're still at work here. And so, Lord, I pray that you would continue to manifest your presence in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I ask that you keep everyone safe and healthy till we return again in Jesus' name.